Hello everyone, welcome to Education in Hands. If we see in our last video, we discussed about limit state method, where we discussed about some parts like limit states, what is meant by limit state of strength, and what is meant by limit state of service multi. Here in this video, we will discuss about the remaining parts of limit state method like actions and what are the design actions and design strengths and what are the other serviceability requirements in this video. Here, if we see the learning outcomes of this video, in today's class, we will discuss about actions or loads and design action and design strength then deflection limits and other serviceability limits. So first, let us start with actions. What is action? According to clause 5.3 of IS 800 2007, actions are nothing but loads that to be considered in design include direct actions experienced by the structure due to self-weight or external actions or it may also include imposed deformations such as loading due to temperature and settlements. So, all these will come under actions in IS 800. If we see in depth about these actions, according to clause 5.3.1, these actions are classified by their variation with time as three major categories in that one first one is permanent actions which is denoted by qp so these are the actions due to self weight of structural and non structural components which are acting on a structure then second one is variable actions qv these are the actions due to imposed loads crane loads wind loads and earthquake loads so if we see in brief permanent actions qp are like self weight of a building or self weight of a structure or bridge which is nothing but dead loads then variable actions are like imposed loads or live loads then the third major classification is accidental actions which is denoted by qa so accidental actions are because of the explosions or impact or fire such type of actions are considered in accidental actions so this is the major classification depending on the variation with the time then next we are having one important classification that is characteristic actions so as per clause 5.3.2 characteristic actions qc are the values of different actions that are not expected to be exceed with more than 5% probability during the life of a structure so if we consider the life of a structure as 50 years means in that 50 years the actions which are acting on the structure will not exceed 5% mean probability. It is given by inverse Bell theory in probability and statistics. So, we are following that statistical approach and we will define this characteristic actions. Then, if we see the characteristic values of accidental loads, if we are going to take means, these are generally correspond to the values specified by relevant code. So, in our IS 800 code, the characteristic values for accidental loads are specified in a separate section. Then, after this characteristic actions, we are going to take design action. So, here as per clause 5.3.3, the actions considered shall be multiplied by the relevant factor to get the design actions. We already discussed in last video like design actions or design loads which is nothing but the load is multiplied with certain factor to get the design load in limit state method and as well as 
for strength of material also we are dividing with certain factor to get the design strength next we will see it so here design action it is specified like actions considered shall be multiplied with relevant factor to get the design actions so how we are going to derive this design actions here we are having a formula qd equal to sigma k gamma fk into qck here qck is the characteristic action at the load k and gamma fk is the partial safety factor for different loads at k given in table 4 of is 800 2007 so the gamma f value is given for different loads in table 4 of is 800 2007 so it will look like this here table 4 of is 800 partial safety factors for loads gamma f for limit states so this is purely in limit state method so here if we see the load combinations first we are having dl ll cl which is nothing but dead load plus live load and crane load likewise here we are having all possible combinations according to our is 800 for that for limit state of strength calculation and for limit state of serviceability calculation we are having different partial safety factors for suppose if i am considering the first combination dead load plus live load then i am having a partial safety factor of 1.5 for dead load then 1.5 and 1.05 for live load first is live load leading live load or leading imposed load we are considering means that one will be multiplied with 1.5 then accompanying all other loads will be multiplied with 1.05 which means imposed load consists of different elements like live loads crane loads etc so in that all loads if one is acting predominantly means then we need to consider this leading factor for that major load then all other loads we need to consider 1.05 likewise we need to assign the partial safety factor for loads in our design actions then next one is design strength according to class 5.4.1 the design strength sd is obtained from ultimate strength su by partial safety factor for material that is gamma m so if we see the formula design strength is obtained as a ratio of su by gamma m so here gamma m is the partial safety factor for materials that is given in table 5 of is 800 2007 so let us see the table 5 of is 800 it will look like this so here first it is definition and then partial safety factor is given so if i consider this first one resistance governed by yielding gamma m naught then the partial safety factor we need to consider is 1.10 likewise whenever we are designing a bolted connection then if we consider friction type bolt then for that bolt gamma mf we need to take as 1.25 in case of shop fabrications and 1.25 in case of field fabrications these things we will discuss clearly in our bolted connections again so first here how we are going to take this partial safety factor for our material is given in table 5 then if we want to check the adequacy of the design we must calculate the values of design action and design strength and then we need to check that design actions are always less than or equal to design strength then only structure is going to withstand the designed loads 
अदरवैज द स्ट्रक्चर मे क्वलैप वै बिका वाट एवर द डिजन ऐक्शन आर् डिजन लोड ऐक्टिंग आन द स्ट्रक्चर शुड बी रेसिस्टेड बै मेटीरियल स्ट्रेंथ इट से सो इफ मेटीरियल स्ट्रेंथ इज लेस् दैन द अड एक्सटर्नल लोड आर् ऐक्शन देन द मेटीरियल विल फेल अंड लीड टू टोटल फेल्यूर आफ द स्ट्रक्चर दट टू चेक द एडिक्वेसी आफ द स्ट्रक्चर वी नीड टू एनश्यूर आलवेज डिजन ऐक्शन should be less than or equal to design strength then factors governing the ultimate strength as per class 5.5 the design strength whatever we are calculating here is obtained from ultimate strength which is our failure criteria so this failure criteria which is ultimate strength or ultimate tensile strength is majorly governed by certain factors those are like this ultimate strength governing factors are stability fatigue and plastic collapse and again in stability we are having stability against overturning and sway stability if the material is going to satisfy all these governing factors then the material can achieve the ultimate strength which is required for the design then next one is limit state of serviceability so we discussed what is meant by limit state of serviceability but what are the criteria that comes under this limit state of serviceability we don't know so if we see here this limit state of serviceability will cover this four criteria in that one first is deflection limit so how good deflection is allowed in a structure then vibration limit next one is durability considerations and the last one is fire resistance so according to is 800 we need to satisfy this serviceability conditions in a structure otherwise the structure is said to be a failure model so what are these conditions if we see the first one the deflection under serviceability loads of a structure should not impair the strength or cause damage to the finishings means the deflection which is happening in the structure will not impair strength or extra burden to the structure or it do not cause any damage to the finishings so if the deflection is within that limit then it is a safe otherwise if it causing any one of this problem means then the building or the structure fails to perform the serviceability criteria if we see deflections are to be checked for the most adverse combination of service loads by elastic analysis using a load factor of 1 so we need to take the worst combination of the loads and we need to multiply with a factor 1 and we need to check the deflections that are going to happen in the structure then if that deflection limits are within limits then the structure is safe so how we are going to check that deflections are within the limit for that only is 800 provided table 6 in code book which is the limiting conditions for deflections in various members and various conditions so if we see that one the table will look like this so here i am taking one example that is live load or wind load for a purlin or grit so if i am taking this live load or wind load on a purlin or grit and it is supporting by elastic cladding then the maximum deflection allowed is span by 150 and if it is supported by a brittle cladding then the maximum deflection allowed is span by 180 so after calculating the deflection which is going to happen in that member if the deflection is exceeding this limiting value then it is not a safe design but if the deflection is within this limiting value then it is a safe design likewise we need to check the deflection limits after design for every member 
then only this serviceability condition is satisfied and then next one is vibration so for vibrations according to 5.6.2 suitable provisions in the design shall be made for the dynamic effects of live loads impact loads and also vibrations due to some machinery in some severe cases possibility of resonance fatigue or unacceptable vibrations shall be investigated for this vibrations annexure c of is 800-2007 gives the set of guidelines to take care of these vibrations and design related to it then next one is durability so in class 5.6.3 the factors affect the durability of the buildings under conditions relevant to their intended life are given like first one is environment and the second one is degree of exposure and the third one is shape of the member and its structural detail then protective measures what are the protective measures we are going to take for that steel structure and the last one is ease of maintenance so if we are not following these five conditions properly then it may affect the durability of a structure then the last one is fire resistance so according to clause 5.6.4 steel structures should have sufficient fire resistance level frl specified in terms of minutes depending upon the purpose of which structure is used and the time taken to evacuate in case of fire so here every steel structure should possess some fire resistant level why because steel is prone to fire that's why it should maintain some fire resistant level for what they are saying in terms of minutes only for evacuating the members are evacuating the place in case of fire so how much time it is required to evacuate that thing we need to keep in mind and we need to maintain that fire resistant level for that time period or for that small time period in minutes so the detailed specifications the detailed specifications for this fire resistance are given in section 16 of is code book 800 2007 so you just go through it and you will have a brief idea regarding this fire resistance so these are the serviceability conditions which we need to consider in our designs during the design according to limit state method so we need to keep all these conditions in our mind for the next classes till end of this design of steel structures so that we can design a building or a structure using limit state method of steel structures thank you see you in the next video with some problems on this method bye